Today we're playing some Rakdo Zombies featuring the brand new Undead Augur out of Modern Horizons, which is the card advantage piece that Modern Zombies always wanted. In addition to that, we're also trying Dreadhorde Butcher, which is a nice new aggressive zombie out of War of the Spark that's proved to be a nice piece for the standard Aristocrats deck. With these two pieces in our possession, will the Modern Zombies deck finally be viable? We're gonna find that out today. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck while also supporting the channel, you can get your cards from tcgplayer.com by clicking the decklist link down below. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you wanted to join the Marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss future Fan Fridays episodes as well as many other things. This video is sponsored by mtgonlinestore.com. For some cool and creative MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, check out mtgonlinestore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. Don't get me wrong, zombies has always been a viable tribe, but they've never really been good, especially when there's other tribal decks in the meta like merfolk, humans and spirits, and even now slivers that are just clearly superior. But thanks to Modern Horizons, what does zombies get that's better? Well, we're getting some more card advantage, therefore getting some more resilience. And if there's one thing that zombies is good at, it's resilience. So we'll be able to grind out more in the mid range and stay alive longer and not be dealt with so easily. Well, we're going to find that out. Starting off with our card advantage, we got Crypt Breaker and Undead Augur, thanks to Modern Horizons. So now we got a little bit of actual card draw, card advantage, which is something that the other tribal decks that I just named off don't really have. Like, Banned Spirits, you got Coco. Humans only really draws cards when they crack Horizon Canopy. And Merfolk has Silvergill Adept, and sometimes they run Cryptic Command, but that's about it. None of them really have a serious way to draw a bunch of cards, but thanks to this Undead Augur, Zombies do have a consistent way to draw cards, and hopefully this lets us grind out a lot better in the late game than those other tribes can. Onto our first set of Resilient One Drops, we got Gravecrawler and Dread Horde Wanderer, uh, which they just come back to life a lot of times. They can just like suicide themselves into the board and then they just come back to life. So that's pretty awesome. Onto our two drops. Thanks to War of the Spark, we are getting Dread Horde Butcher, which is the reason we are going into red. This is an excellent zombie to drop on turn two. Starts getting really big late in the game when the opponent has to sweep the board and this guy's big enough. They're gonna have to take a lot of damage. This guy's a really good reach. Relentless Dead, when it dies, you can pay a black to bring it back as well as pay X to reanimate a zombie with CMC X from the graveyard. Just get all the stuff back. Also, he is a 2 mana 2 2 menace, which attacks very well. And onto our three drops, Drops Messenger is notoriously one of the most aggressive zombies of all time. Enters, deals 2 damage, dies, comes back bigger, and deals 2 more damage when he enters. That's insane. And our one zombie lord is Lord of the Accursed. And this is probably the best zombie lord because he gives him plus 1 plus 1 as a lord does, but you can pay 2 and tap him to give all zombies menace until end of turn, which is really good for just getting there, getting the last bits of damage you need through blockers. Also really good with Dreadhorde Butcher because Dreadhorde Butcher wants to hit the player, so giving him menace is quite good. And onto our removal spells, thanks to going red for Dreadhorde Butcher, we also gain access to Lightning Bolt. Uh, it's going to be good for dealing with some early blockers, but if our opponent uh, has no creatures, they're like a control deck or something, Bolt is really good for getting that reach we need to finish our opponent off. And then we got our Zombie Tribal Removal Spell in Dark Salvation. So. Pretty much it's used as a one mana disfigure. A creature gets minus X minus X, where X is the number of zombies we control, but also we can pay X into it. So for example, if we pay three mana, we get a two, two zombie token, and then a creature gets minus X minus X. So it's really cool for both uh, progressing our board state while also dealing with the creature. And we also got another one in the sideboard as well. We got a total of 22 lands, a place at a Cavernous Souls, typical black red mana base, and then two copies of Nurturing Peatland. Now, Nurturing Peatland is one of the new canopy lands out of Modern Horizons. It's in black, so we're treating it as a swamp. Late in the game, we can crack it to draw a card if we need a little bit of card advantage. And onto the sideboard, it looks very weird, but it's really quite simple. So if we're going up in a matchup where our removal is dead, maybe we can take out that and a couple other things and bring in the disruption package of Thought Seize, Duress, and Liliana against decks like Control, Combo, and Tron. So that's pretty easy change out right there. And then we also got the extra copy of Dark Salvation when we're going up against a creature based deck. And then we got a play set of Leyline of the Void when we're going up against a graveyard deck. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. 
Really quick before we get into the gameplay, it's time to welcome a brand new patron to the family. Actually, two new patrons. First of all, Trake with your tier one pledge and Papaya Guy 22 with your tier three pledge. I really appreciate it, guys. Welcome to the Marination, and I hope you enjoy the gameplay. Got a game here against the impossible Moo. And yes, we will be on the play with Rakdos Zombies in Modern. And that is a good hand. I'm going to keep that. Yeah, what's up, Dowser Oregon? Start on Blackleaf Cliffs into Gravecrawler. And pass the turn. Dow Drowsier Oregon 6, welcome back to the stream. Good to see you again. Rise and Shine Gamers. What's up, Funny Planetary Alert? Or Funny Planet 1. I don't know where I got Funny Planetary Alert from. Hex Drinker. Ooh. All right, so we can start drawing cards since we did draw another zombie. So we can go like Crypt Breaker plus Grave Crawler, draw some cards. But I think what I want to do is just get out the aggression right now. So get in with the Grave Crawler. And we could just go Relentless Dead. That's not bad. Uh. You know what? We still get out of two power attacker with Grave Crawler. I could have drawn a card there, but I would have to sacrifice two damage, and I think every bit of damage is relevant. So I didn't want to. Oh, Drowsier? Oh, Drowser. Dowser. Wait, what? What am I? What am I missing? <laughs> Fork. Oh man, opponent just happens to have Forked Bolt in their deck. What is that? Well, at least I can get back Gravecrawler. Alright, give me a land. I would like a land. Dreadwander. Alright, so let's just go Dreadwander plus Gravecrawler from the grave. And just keep attacking. Boosh. Seems pretty good. We're definitely winning the race at this pace, unless the opponent plays a Goyf that can block well, but that's fine. We can swing right into a Goyf. Don't matter. We have enough uh, recursion to swing into a Goyf. That is a Delelver of Secrets. An opponent is turning their dude into a 4-4 pro instance, which is fine. They can go ahead and block all they want and put Cavern on zombies. And I'm just going to relentlessly attack through because I have no reason not to. My stuff can come back to life. So again, for six. So that's the great thing about the zombie tribe that the other tribes don't really have is the ability to keep bringing your dudes back to life because they just don't die. I mean, I guess spirits is also good at that as well. Uh, humans is just one and done, but they also get value for their creatures, which is something that zombies don't do unless they die. I mean, I guess recurring is a way of value. But now messenger into messenger is just lethal. We just keep on attacking. If they want to block messenger, it's going to come back and drain for another two. They flip their Insectile Aberration, but I don't think they can afford to attack. We're still getting there. You just heard zombies, what's going? What's up, Pure Stone 9 Welcome back to the stream, good to see you again. Yo, that's the first ever, that's the first ever goldfish, um, emote I had put in my chat before. That's, uh, that's cool. The opponent's just on Team Redelver. That's really cool. Maybe they got Nimble Mongoose as well. They're starting to tick up their Hex Drinker, trying to make it into a 6 6 Progenitus. Yeah, they can't afford to attack. Alright, cool. So let's just keep attacking. Just keep on attacking. Alright, they block Drow's Messenger and a zombie. Their Delver dies. Get him for two. Drow's Messenger comes back, drains for two more. And now we play another Gerald's Messenger, and they are dead. There's nothing they can do. If this Messenger dies, they die. And I'm just going to attack with it, so there's nothing they can do. Yeah, alright, so they concede. On to sideboarding. Zombie's doing its thing. That's a lot of black cards in a stack, so they're all, like, together. I have to separate them each time. Alright, um... All right, so Teamer Delver, I probably want this Dank Salvation. It kills, um, it kills the uh, Hexdringer because it's pro instance, but this is a sorcery, and I don't think I need like Duress or Lily or anything like that. I think this is fine. So let's bring in the Dank Salvation, and let's cut 
probably like a Lord of the Accursed. I mean, Lord effects are good, but he doesn't particularly get us any value and he's just going to get bolted. And I want my creatures to recur in this matchup. I think that seems like a good plan. So let's run it like that, I think. Welcome to the zombie horde. Yeah, this is great. I'm having a blast playing this. All right, so there's a dang salvation. We got the Lord and the Undead Augur. I'm gonna keep this because we can also turn one Bolt a Delver, which they are likely to play here, either a Delver or a Hexdrinker, one of the two, and it is going to get bolted, whatever it is. All right, it is a Delver. Oh, change of plans, there's a Dread Wander. So I'm gonna start getting the aggression out there. If the opponent flips their Delver, I will be able to bolt it, and I doubt they kept in Spell Pierce. I really doubt they kept in Spell Pierce. They did not flip their Delver. Misty Rainforest into Graft Digger's Cage. That's a good one. All right, so let's get in for two. And just follow up with an Undead Augur. So Marsh Flats, crack it. Let's get our Lucky Swamp to ensure victory. And then we'll follow up with the Undead Augur. Pass the turn. And now Dark Salvation, when I pump two X into it, like it'll just give me a 2-2 zombie and kill something, which is great value. Opponent did top deck a Spell Pierce off of the uh, Delver, but luckily I'll be able to shock this Blood Crypt and then bolt it. Force them to not be able to do that, do anything, but Spell Pierce is whatever. Like, I can just play a Drops Messenger next turn, no problem, because I'm definitely winning this race as it is. If they want to kill any of my dudes, I draw a card. Is it just me or does this deck feel really decent? <laughs> okay, so they're on the blue-green plan. They shock, which is great for us. What they tap it out for? A Hooting Mandrills? Yep, it is a Hooting Mandrills, but they don't have Spell Pierce up anymore. So you know what that means. There's another Undead Augur. So now I can go with Undead Augur. And now I can attack with both. And if they block with Hooting Mandrills, then I draw two cards. And drawing two cards is nice. So now let's Shock and let's bolt the hooting mandrills i guess past turn so opponent can start trying to race us but i do have double dark salvation so hopefully i can uh, stem the bleeding a little bit all right so opponent's gonna start racing in there they could use our own undead auger against us too so we gotta be wary of that opponent shocks down to nine so they have some stuff going on all right, let's go to combat first. I don't think I need to play a Lord. I think I'd rather use my dank salvations here. Get in there. Opponent is going to abrade the undead auger. We go to seven, but that's not in range of two bolts. And are they going to take the two? They do take the two. So let's follow up with grave crawler. And now we have two zombies. So now we can dark salvation. Oh, no, no, cancel. Uh, Dark Salvation ourselves. Targeting Delver. So X is currently zero. Give the Delver minus two, minus two. All right, sure. I'm gonna say no, and now we'll do it again. See if they have like a Vapor Snag or something to disrupt it. And it resolves. All right, so now we are currently winning the race and we have the opponent on the back end. Let's see if they have a goy for something big they can follow up with, because I don't think that's gonna bust through a Jarl's messenger. All right, so snap a braid, I assume. Yeah, so braid's gonna kill off our dread wander, which is clearly the better creature here since they have Grafdigger's Cage. They didn't even cast it. Oh, Grafdigger's Cage, they can't cast things from their grave. All right, so let's go to combat. We can go ahead and get in there. Four, four. And they're gonna block the grave crawler. All right, follow up with Jarolf's messenger, Boosh, and follow up with Crypt Breaker, and pass. Perhaps anger saves them, and they concede. The Jarolf's messenger is too much to handle. I love it, man. This deck feels pretty good. Getting there against Teamer Delver with Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker feels like a great piece for that deck, by the way. Super excited to see what happens with Hex Drinker and Modern. Anyways, I'll take it. Let's move on to the next game. Got a game here against Daniel Figueroa. And yes, we're going to be on the play. 
And we have not a second land. So, I mean, it would have been great because we got Dreadhorde. But I think I have to mulligan and not be so risky. Yeah, this hand's great. It literally has a one drop into Dreadhorde. So, exactly what we want in Nurturing Pea Land. That is the third land we needed as well. So let's start on Cavern of Souls, naming Zom. And throw out Crypt Breaker. We can go ahead and pass the turn. Also, we're getting a, a little bit into the stream here, so if you guys can tell me if the audio sounds fine, that would be cool. Because usually, voice meter banana tends to start crackling my audio. So, I've noticed that in, in like some videos we did, that my audio partway through started to crack up a little bit. So, just wanted to make sure that it's all good and it's not happening. Alright, so let's go with Dread Horde Butcher. Start growing the dude. We are taking... Oh, thank you, Lincoln. And we are taking three... Um, three self-pain off of our lands here. Because we had to shock and then we're going to play Nurturing Peter land. Um, but that's okay. Hopefully we can race. Opponent is on burn, so it's going to be a little bit difficult. We're trying our best. When we're not interacting with our opponent nor blocking their creatures. They have free reign to just play whatever they want. So, okay, they're gonna fire away at our Dreadhorde Butcher, so we're just gonna shoot their face. Thank goodness they didn't have land into Searing Blaze. If they miss their land drop, though, this is great for us. Gets in for two. Thank goodness we got a Swamp so we don't have to pay life. So now we can just go ahead and get out our Geralt's Messenger. Which is nice. Start racing. Drops Messenger is such a great card. Such a fun card. Such a pretty card. Nice to look at. And it's just so annoying. <laughs> Alright, opponent didn't hit their second land, so I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Opponent's gonna start trying to race us. Lord of the Accursed is a nice top deck. So let's throw out Lord of the Accursed. Get in for half their life total, and let's see if they can kill us here. If they can't kill us here, then uh, we got it. So... Stomping ground into Atarka's command would be the likely thing they could possibly kill us. Uh, because land bolt bolt doesn't actually do it. That's 6, 9, 12. Yeah. Suspense rift bolt. Yeah, that doesn't do it. Alright, cool. So now we can give our zombies menace. Or we can just attack. Yeah, we can just attack. Force them to block. Let's see if they got a gut shot. Blocks one time. Alright, let's sack our Nurturing Pete Land, see if we can get some good stuff, like a Bolt. That's the Jarrow's Messenger, and that is lethal. Let's go ahead and fetch. We don't even need our Lucky Swamp for this one. And throw out a Messenger for lethal. Boosh. Keanu. You know, TBH on that, that Xbox thing when Keanu Reeves came out, I have actually never seen a picture of Keanu Reeves or a Keanu Reeves movie. I have never seen Keanu Reeves at all, ever in my life. So that's the first time I ever saw what Keanu Reeves looks like. Because I never, I've heard his name before, but I never knew who he was. That was the first time I saw him. Fun fact, I don't know anything about the world because I don't watch TV. All right. On to sideboarding against Burn. Duress seems decent. And I definitely want Duress, and probably Lily as well. Lily is uh, surprisingly decent against Burn. Uh, over, like, Crypt Breaker, because it makes us pay life, and it's just a one mana 1-1 one, one otherwise. And then Undead Augur, because it also hurts us. And try it like that, I guess. Oh, no, wait. Dark Salvation. Bring in Dark Salvation. Is it too late? Is it too late? Come on, don't tell me it's too late. It's too late. Alright, well, we got Lily. Got a bunch of 3-drops here. We also got a 1-drop and a 2-drop, so I'm gonna keep that... Because we got a one drop and a two drop. Aired Massaw. Alright. Time for Soul Scar, Gama Guide, or Swift Spear, or Grim Lava. What's it gonna be? Keanu is Bay. Kappa Pride. I don't know. If I had to choose a celebrity that I would say is Bay, I don't I honestly don't know who I would choose. I'm not really uh I don't know. 
I mean, I can obviously point out handsome celebrities like Paul Walker, stuff like that, but I don't think I would call any celebrity Bay. I'm not a fan of celebrities, TBH. I'm a fan of music artists, but I think that actors and stuff, like, I'm not really into movies, so I'm not into their work, really. All right, there's Eidolon, so we likely lost unless we top deck a removal spell for that. Goblin Guide is going to reveal a nurturing peatland. All right, well, throw out a relentless dead. Time to go on the blocking plan. Liliana's gonna have to do work. I'm just gonna pass Leva blocks. This is gonna be an uphill battle, very difficult. We actually have no way to gain life. Oh no, it's just a land. All right. There's a duress. So now we got to start racing and hope they don't top anything. So let's throw out Jeroff's Messenger. Because I think that's the most aggressive. Boom, get in for two. Play in Marsh Flats. Take up Liliana. We don't need to duress anymore because they're in top deck mode. Pass and see if they can top a bolt. If they can't top a bolt, then we should have this. In three turns. Don't top a bolt in three turns. Nope. Alright. Well, we tried. We tried. Definitely tried. On to sideboarding. Gonna leave it exactly... Oh, wait. No, no. Bring in the Dark Salvation. Cut an Undead Augur. Because it's painful. Gotta get a removal spell in our opener to deal with an Eidolon, because that Eidolon is like the biggest thing that makes burn so good. Alright, we get to be on the play this time. There's double Lily. Yeah, this hand's way too slow. I gotta mole this. Alright, this hand is... doesn't have a one drop, so we're not gonna be able to race as good, but it doesn't seem mullable and I don't want to go to five. Okay, there's a Dread Horde Wander, a Dread Wander, a little late to the party, so I'm gonna put it on the bottom. I'd rather find like a removal spell right now. All right, cavern on zombie, go. Do you think we're ever gonna have a zombie zombie in magic? Like a dead zombie? Patrolling the Mojave, no, you got it wrong, Jokovo. It's patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. You forgot almost, there's an almost in there. I've played that game way too many times so I can tell you that it says almost. All right, throw a relentless dude. All right, pass a turn. See if opponent would like to bolt this. All right, no turn one play. So we're on par here. Don't you searing blood or searing blaze me or throw out an Eidolon. Don't do it. Dang it, they did it. That's such a huge tempo play, man. Like when, when you're going up against burn and they effectively use a searing blood or searing blaze, it's just, you're such at a tempo loss. It's, it's there too for one. There's a bolt. We currently don't have red mana. Alright, throw out Jarl's Messenger. Time to start racing. This is our race stick. Race on a stick right here. This is it. He's reaching for that win. He's reaching into your soul. Take all your wins. Take your KD. Eidolon. Well, I do have a bolt, but I currently cannot use it. Another messenger is decent, although uh, Lord of the Accursed can block Eidolon. But if they have like another searing, if they have a searing blaze, then I'm screwed. Well, we'd be racing. So yeah, I'm gonna throw out a Relentless or Lord of the Accursed here. Take a trigger.
Get in for four. All right, so I feel like I'm in the winning scenario here, unless the opponent has a Helix for the Lord of the Accursed. So they have a Helix or a Searing Blaze. Those are the two things that could actually screw me over here. Oh, you gotta go? Well, thanks. Thanks for hanging out, Lincoln. See you next time. And they did have a series. Okay, it's a skewer. Never mind. Skewer is gonna hit our lord, but they did have to take a trigger for that, and that's what I wanted. So that's good. That's great, actually. So as long as it wasn't a helix or searing blaze, then that is great. So go to combat, get in for three. And now play another Jarov's Messenger. Get them down to six. All right, now I could risk this. I could play a, uh, a Grave Crawler and go to nine. But if they have, let's see, they would have to have Bolt Bolt attack us, which is not enough. Yeah, Bolt Bolt attack us is not enough. Uh, or I could just pass because double Jarrah's Messenger, like, they're gonna have to cast a spell and go to four. Yeah, and then it doesn't matter how I attack, so yeah, I just pass. I literally just pass. Like, you are, you have to kill us here, opponent. If it requ it literally requires three spells to kill us here. And that is gonna kill yourself with Eidolon. So, you can only cast two spells, so they have to be Helixes or else you die. They have to be helixes. They just pass. No matter how we attack here, we got it. Or we should have it. Yeah, no, no. They get to live because they're going to trade off their Eidolon. Unfortunately, my Black Leaf entered tapped, so I can't bolt. But the thing's going to be at the table. And they're going to one. All right, so let's see what flurry of top decks they have here. Searing Blood, the other one. All right. One is doing a good job. No, that's literally it. They come back and, they, and he dies. That's four damage on the stack. So you have to kill me here, opponent. You have to Helix. You have to Helix. Boral Charm, that don't do it. That don't do it. Oh, do you have a Bolt? Is your literally... Okay, nope. That's not enough. And the triggers on the stack. You lose two, trigger on the stack, you lose two, and we got there against Burn. Nice. Just barely. Jarrell's Messenger is such a good race stick. Like I just mentioned a second ago. So good for just, like, winning races. If you can play it freely on an empty board, it's getting you there. Got a game here against IJWTSOMF. That's obviously an anagram, so during this game, we're going to try to figure that out. Um, and we are on the play. With a Rakdos Zombies. And this hand is good. So I'm going to keep that one drop and a one drop, one drop into Lord. Seems like a tribal deck to me. All right. So what does IJWTSOMF stand for? Is Jill wearing the same outfit Monday through Friday? <laughs> that, could, that could be what it means. Is Jill wearing the same outfit, mom? F word. F. Is Jill wearing the same outfit, mom? F. That's what it stands for. Oops. Wrong creature. Or it could stand for, I just went to someone's outdoor... meeting frenzy i don't know i just went to someone's own milk farm i just went to someone's own milk farm or i just watered the sunflowers outside momentarily freshly Fibble Fib Commander? Nah. We're doing core 20. We're doing core 20. 
You don't have to build new decks, just have four... You have four decks, you already have an MTGO. That's cool. Alright, Lava Dart's gonna shoot off some of our guys, get back a Phoenix. So they did get their net draw. So lucky them. Play Lord. Get him for three. That's what Lava Dart's good for. So opponent got their, their nut draw. Get some nuts in the chat. Mama, Mama Morphos growing the Swiss Spear. Exactly what they needed to bust through the Lord. So they're getting pretty lucky draws here. Into another Mana Morphos. Forcing us to block, because we can't get to three, because if we get to three, then we're dying. And they bolt the Lord anyways. So that is literally game. So opponent got the Hyper Ultra Nut. I definitely need Leyline here, because they rely on their graveyard for uh, Bedlam Reveler as well as Phoenix. So bring the Ley Lines. And cut the Lords. The Lords are always the slowest ones. I mean, Relentless Dead is also a, a decent thing to cut, but it's whatever. It's whatever. Omega Nets, yeah. That Lava Card, Pew Pew, Lava Dart, that's exactly what Mono Red Phoenix wanted. It enables Mono Red Phoenix. Mono Red Phoenix was a thing before, but now it's a super thing. Super ultra thing. I just want to share our milk farm. That's what it stands for. Yeah, that's what it stands for. Or it stands for... Hold on, let's see, let's see our hand. Uh, this hand is... I don't know about this. I think it's too slow. I'm gonna mull. Okay. I'll always keep a turn two Dread Butcher. So yes, let's keep that. Cavernous Souls to the bottom. We're also we're already kind of flooded as it is. Or it stands for is Jimmy waiting to suck on my Is Jimmy waiting to suck on my friend? I think. Or Isaiah just wants to swim on Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. Isaiah just wants to swim on Mount Fuji. There we go. Man, why is their opponent's deck so nuts? Turn two Metamorphos, Metamorphos, Flame Slash into what? Looting, discarding two Phoenixes? That's what I would assume. Dank Salvation. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna Dank Salvation here, I think. Yeah, so let's go Zom. Let's Dank Salvation ourselves on Swift Spear. If Julie wants that S, offer more fam. That's a good one. Or how about okay, cool, we got we got the we got a second two drop to play, so we got some S to play. Causal X return. Alright. Play double. Relentless dude. Pass the turn. And they got Menace. Pretty potent. Oh, they can play, um... Big ol' Bedlam Reveler here. Alright, let's think of some more. Is... 
Is juice... Is juice... Wet. No, wait. That was a good one. Alright, attack with double relentless dead. Play back the dread wander from our grave. And play the one in our hand. Which is not lethal, unfortunately, but could be. I just want the sand of my flame. Lava darts us, lights up the stage, to get a land. And a Bedlam Reveler, I had opponent hit it right on the nose. And now they get back Arc Light Phoenix as well. So opponent got super lucky there. Uh, let's see if they have a bolt to actually kill us. They don't have a bolt to actually kill us, but wait. Oh, wait. Yeah, they just Lava Dart. That's game. Yeah. That's unfortunate. So the opponent just got the nut there. Um, They darted us down to eight. Got... Yeah, they, the opponent got exactly what they needed in that turn. Literally perfect. Lava Dart us, Light of the Sage, get exactly what they want to Bedlam Reveler, Digit Phoenix, play a Swift Spear, Flashback Lava Dart to get Prowess and get exactly lethal. So that's a shame that, that just happened, but you know, those, those kinds of things happen in Magic and you just gotta accept that sometimes your opponent's luckier than you. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here with a typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video, and this was the longest game. Um, so as I always say, if you wanted to see the full games unedited, unsped up, uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and watch the entire VOD there. So we end up going up against Affinity, and they get off turn to Urza, and they also have a Ravager to follow up with. So it's just like, how the heck am I supposed to compete with that? I keep on going on. I don't concede yet because, you know, zombies can punch through some damage. Like at any time, uh, this uh, Dreadhorde Butcher, if they decide to block it and kill it, it would deal five damage to their face, which then would put them to three so I can bolt them. I was hoping the whole time that they would do that, but unfortunately they're a little bit smarter than that. And not only do they get turned to Urza, but they follow up with Experiment Frenzy. So insane nut draw from Affinity. We go into the next game, bring in another copy of Dank Salvation because I think we need the extra removal. Uh, this hand is a little bit weak, but I do have two bolts, so maybe I can kill some things. I'm able to kill off a Vault Scourge and follow up with an Undead Augur and just start getting in there with the Dreadhorde Butcher. Growing the Dreadhorde Butcher, which is pretty nice. And right here is where I'm contemplating, what do I kill? Do I bolt the Vault Scourge or the uh, Steel Overseer? So I decided to bolt the Vault Scourge because I don't want that Life Linker getting in in the air for a bunch of damage. They're able to keep ticking up their Steel Overseer to pump their dudes, but I'm able to force them to Chump Block here because if they Chump Block the... Um, if they double block on the Dreadhorde Butcher, I'd be able to kill their Arcbound Ravager. But fortunately, we were able to get there through that. We go into the next game, and we get a pretty good draw here. And our opponent's draw was really bad. They got nothing but mana and nothing really to do. So we ended up getting there against Affinity and Zombies versus Robots. Zombies get in there because Zombies like to eat brains. And Robots have brains. Because have you played Mortal Kombat 11? They take the brains and put them in the Robots, and that's how you make Robots. So there you go. That's how it works. GG. Got a game here against ZX Rogue, and we are on the draw with zombies. And I'm gonna keep this hand, even though it doesn't have a two drop, it's not really mullable. So I'm gonna keep it and hope to top that another turn one or two play. So sure. All right, let's see. Our opponent has an eye kite avatar. How do you get that? That's crazy. In treasure chests, eye kite treasure. That's really awesome. Prismatic Vista, so opponent's on uh, Black Blue Narset Days Undoing. We know what we're going up against at least. Let's start on Dread Wander because he enters tapped. So the jig is up, we're on Zombie Tribal. Double Prismatic Vista, they could also be on a Ice Fang Codal deck. Alright. We drew another land, so let's get in there for two. Play a Grave Crawler and pass the turn. Start throwing out Thrall's Messengers into Lords. Coming up here. Hoping our opponent doesn't have anything like Flaying Tendrils in their main board. Alright, so Snow Covered Mountain. I don't know what we're going up against currently. But I'm sure we're going to get blown out and figure out soon enough. Hoping they don't anger us.
get in for four. Where's Mad Vista cracks it for, I assume, an island? The planes! Ooh, what is going on here? Helix is one. All right, we can get that back later. Throw out Drops Messenger, hoping that it does not get pathed. I mean, if they had a path, I assume they would have pathed Gravecrawler there. Just some kind of Sun and Moon Chalice of the Void deck. I assume it's some kind of Chalice of the Void deck because they had Helix. Jeskai, Enter Planar Beacon. So it's a, it's a Planeswalker deck. So I was right, it was a Narset deck. And they gained a life when they played it. Gain a life for each of its colors, right? You gain one life in general. Alright, just one life. You look at the top four, what is it gonna be? Arkham's Astrolabe. Alright. Get to draw a craft. There is another Drow's Messenger. Although, I probably want to get a Lord out there, right? No, let's get out another Drow's Messenger. Go to combat. Let's attack... Narset for... Do I even care about Narset? Like, it's not gonna let me crack my Nurturing Peat land, but... Do I really care right now? Alright, I'm gonna take a risk, and I'm not gonna kill their Narset. I'm just gonna knock Narset down to one. I don't think I care about cracking my Nurturing Peatland too much right now. I think that we have enough aggression to win here. Depending on what our opponent has. Because if they have a Supreme Verdict, that don't matter, because all our stuff comes back to life. That actually upgrades their board, because we're gonna hit them for four and have lethal. So, if they Supreme Verdict, we win. And we're only really fearing Anger of the Dogs here. Wrath of God is fine. Anger the dogs, on the other hand. We don't we don't care about them gods, but the dogs are what is scary. Dogs are more vicious. Because they exile our stuff. They make us run away into exile, and our stuff don't come back. Looks like a Jace. That's fine. You can go ahead and bounce our... Bounce our dudes. Okay, they bounce Gravecrawler. Interesting. Oh, another Drow's Messenger, A. Eh? Alright, getting at Jace, getting at them. Play another Drow's Messenger. Hoping to not get detentions feared. Follow up with Gravecrawler. And pass the turn. That's a lot of messengers. Yep, and they concede. They got no way to deal with Triple Messenger. Because if they die, they come back, and they come back bigger. So on to sideboarding against Planeswalkers. Definitely bringing in the control package. So cut Bolts, cut Dang Salvations, and cut um, some Lords. Bring in Duress and Thoughtseize and Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Now the problem is they could potentially be a Chalice of the Void deck. Did we see any one drops? We saw a Helix. So I feel like they're a Chalice of the Void deck, so that could be scary. Uh, let's just cut all the Lords. Run it like that. Gotta cut a 3-drop to bring in a 3-drop. Don't want to be too clunky now. So now we're zombie control. But we're on the draw this game, so if they have a turn 1 chalice, they can do that. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure they're a chalice deck. Okay, well this doesn't- oh, it does have a lily. I was gonna say it doesn't have any sideboard cards, but it's good. 
It does have a sideboard card and it's good. We can go one drop into Undead Augur. So if they try to kill our stuff, we draw cards. And then Lily should just come down and just control the game. We can go ahead and ditch a Gravecrawler to Lily just to get it back. So it's pretty nice. Dreadwander, far superior to Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones is cool, but it goes back to your hand, not to the battlefield. Let's keep this hand. Alright, snow-covered plains and passes. Let's start on Dreadwander. Again, so start in the same draw we had last time. Feel the Ruin is a time for Chalice. It is not. Ooh, Dreadhorde Butcher. Alright, change of plans. We're going on Dreadhorde Butcher plan. Start growing him a little bit. He gonna be a big boy. Alright, Celestial Purge. Thank goodness that is not going to our Lily. So our Lily be living. And we got the third land for Lily, and our opponent did not hit their land. So let's see if they have a second Celestial Purge. If not, then we likely just win off the back of this Lily. So now we can just ditch Grave Crawlers and keep getting them back. Opponent discards a Yasse, is a Mind Sculptor. Papaya guy! Papaya is here. And Papaya is our newest patron. So thank you, Papaya, for becoming a patron and showing up to the stream as well. I really appreciate it. Good to have you. And my personal welcome to the marination. Interplanar Bacon. What three drop you got to fairy, perhaps? Oh, Kaya. Kaya's fine. We're making you discard crads. Oh no, the exile or grave crawler. Dread wander. All right, take up Lily. Discard grave crawler because we're about to get it right back. Follow up with undead auger. So if they want to kill our stuff, we draw cards. And play Dread Wander and pass the turn. Will you play Plants vs. Zombies later? Um, you mean like on stream? No, I, I currently don't have Plants vs. Zombies. I used to play it all the time. I think I, I deleted Plants vs. Zombies 2 from my phone. I really wish Plants vs. Zombies 2 was on, like, Xbox, though, but it's not. Because I would play the heck out of that. I play- I, I didn't beat Plants vs. Zombies 2. I played- I beat Plants vs. Zombies 1, like, multiple times, but... Plants vs. Zombies 2... It's a very long game, and I did not make it all the way through yet, because it's a lot more difficult than Plants vs. Zombies 1. And also, it's just- I think that Plants vs. Zombies 1 is a lot funner, TVH. Because you can do more what you want, whereas Plants vs. Zombies 2 challenges are just more restricted. Alright, they're preventing the damage of Undead Augur and starting to exile stuff with the stuff. A zombie. Relentless dude. Make them discard their last card. Go to combat. Oh, is a Gideon. Nice. Um, well, I kind of want to hit Kaya. Yeah, I want to hit Kaya because Kaya, if it wants to exile, if it wants to exile Dread Wander, it's going to have to kill itself. So, yeah, I don't want Kaya to stick around hitting all my one drops forever. So, I'll try to kill off Kaya. And they are going to sack off Kaya to exile Dreadwander. And they ran out of cards. They're in top deck mode. <laughs> Alright, they're preventing Undead Augur once again. Alright, there is a messenger. 
play a messenger. Take up Lily again. Go to combat. And let's go ahead and attack Gideon down. All right, so we ended up with five total wins. The deck turned out to be way better than I thought it was going to be. Man, Zombies is just so consistent now. Um, so uh, Undead Augur was an all-star. Worked out really good. More often than not, the Zombies we were typically using to win was like these two, Dreadwander and Gravecrawler in the early game, into Butcher plus Undead Augur into like Messenger. The ones that we never really casted that much were like Undead Augur or... Crypt Breaker, Relentless Dead. And Lord was okay in like the later matchups, but I don't know. It wasn't like we ended up siding it out a lot. But what was good, Dark Salvation was great. Honestly, um, Dark Salvation felt really good. Um, I mean, it's only good against the creature based matchups, but it felt great. Um, so honestly, I'd probably want another good. One drop, two power zombie, Crypt Breaker. In this current modern format, the way the meta has become, it's just very fast. Very, very, very fast. So I don't think you really have a lot of time to use a Crypt Breaker. I mean, you can use it to discard a card and grade a 2 2 zombie. And then if that card was like a grave crawler you discarded, you just buy it right back. Um, but you know, it's just, it's a little too slow, I think, right now. In the current meta, it used to be great. It used to be a really good card. Um, but maybe. There could be an argument for going into Mardu Zombies so you can run Wayward Servant. And Wayward Servant's awesome. And also, I wouldn't have mind having like a um, uh, Carry On Feeder. Carry On Feeder, like you don't mind, like when your Dreadhorde Butcher is really huge, you wouldn't mind sacking it off to blow up their face. You wouldn't mind sacking a Gravecrawler to draw a card off Undead Augur and recast the Gravecrawler. You wouldn't mind sacking a Drow's Messenger EOT to get it bigger, make him lose two more and get him for lethal the following turn. And also, it'll start getting counters. It doesn't block, it's really small and doesn't really do a whole lot if you don't have anything to sack, but um, there's a lot of scenarios where there's stuff you want to sack. And so I would I would consider trying Carrion Feeder. I would consider going into Mardu for a Wayward Servant. A Relentless Dead, don't get me wrong, it's a great zombie. Two mana, two, two menace is a pretty good attacker. But that ability, like I said, it has the same problem as Crypt Breaker. Where it's just too slow for today's meta to actually use that ability. We never use that ability. And I don't think, if we played 10 more games, I don't think we ever would. So, maybe there's an argument for going Carrion Feeder, Wayward Servant, or like exploring your other options with zombies. Like I said, I'd want another good cheap one drop because it felt like our best hands were the ones where we got one drop zombies and there is other one drop recurrable zombies i believe there's one more with two power there's also you got gnarled scar hide which can bestow onto something if you need to get in there for the last bits of damage late in the game um you know there's things you can do there's things to try and you can mess around with it but this deck is actually pretty dang cheap if you make your land base pretty budget like you don't need these nurturing peat lands i just threw them in cavern you can replace with unclaimed territory let's say mire is not required like you can make this deck pretty cheap if you wanted to try it out just mix up the sideboard a little bit obviously no lilies and thought seasons but sideboard worked out just fine Got the Graveyard of Hate we need, which is the most important thing. And we got our Go Up Against Control package, as well as one more removal spell for creatures. So I felt like the sideboard worked out pretty decently. Also, there's obviously arguments for, um, you know, bringing in some artifact hate in the sideboard, like a brain. Because we don't have an answer to ensnaring bridge. Um, I don't know, stuff like that. It's just, there's little things that could be useful, like dealing with the dang Chalice of the Void, which was a nuisance against Affinity could be relevant, you know, so a braid could be there for that, could help out against affinity. Uh, cause just Dark Salvation alone with some bolts is not gonna always get there against affinity. But you know, could do things. So I guess that's about it guys. Let me know what you think about the deck in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new for the jankiest of gameplay every other day. And um, Oh man, I just drew a blank super hardcore there. Anyways, thank you very much to all my patrons. Thank you very much to all my sponsors. And now I'm gonna get them out of here. Thank you very much for watching. 
And thanks to everybody who showed up in the chat today. Now catch you in the next video. Peace out.